Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so our third and final example here. And um, so if you haven't watched the previous two examples, you should if this is your first video on the power series method. Now, otherwise, here's the solution why that we're seeking. So y prime will have to look like this and y double prime will have to um, subsequently be this. Now we can rewrite y double prime. So instead of starting at n equals two, it starts at n equals zero. And uh, if we do that, obviously we'd have to rewrite it in this way. And I explained how um, you do this in my previous two examples. So I'm not going to do that. Plus I have tons and tons of videos on Sigma notation. So you can watch those so you can um, learn more about Sigma if that's what you need. Anyway, now that we've got y, y prime and y double prime all in sigma, we could rewrite our given equation using sigma and here it is. And in my next step, what I'm going to do is um, put this 2x uh, inside of this middle sigma. And when I do that, I'll have to write this here, um, which is like this n. It did not have a 2 in front of it. Now it does. So that must have been this 2. And yeah, and the x goes in there and changes this x to the n minus 1 to an x to the n. And um, that's what it should do. And that's that. Next, we're going to change this n equals 1 to n equals 0. And we could just do that. And the reason is, if we change this middle sigma so that we start at n equals 0, then the very first term of that would be 0. Because we'd have 2 times 0 times, yeah, but like 0 times, so 0, right? OK, so since the first um, term is 0, uh, if we change the sum uh, in the middle uh, to start at n equals 0, um, so we could just do that. It's, it doesn't contribute anything. Yeah. OK, cool. So we do that and there that is. And we like that. Now all the sigmas, um, you know, are identical. So we could just write one sigma and that's what we do. And now, um, now, like when I said all the sigmas are identical, you know what I meant? Like X to the N here, X to the N there, X to the N there. And yeah, OK, I don't want someone to accuse me of like skipping too many details in your teaching. Um, but now, uh, clearly, uh, to make this equal to zero, uh, we need to set uh, the, what, the coefficient of x to the n, or what's multiplying x to the n, which is all this stuff, equal to zero, right? We do that. Okay, cool. And then, um, using this equation here, uh, we solve for a sub n plus 2. And that will give us a way to compute the first so many um, coefficients of our um, solution, right? Our solution y, right? Like, um, OK, uh, comes with lots of coefficients, right? <laughs> um, too many to count. Uh, but yeah, we can get a feel for them um, by like now plugging in n equals 0, n equals 1, n equals 2, and so on uh, into this uh, very last equation I displayed. Now, I showed you that strategy in the previous two examples, which is like plugging in uh, the first like 5 or 6 or 7 n values into this and then observing what's happening with the odd coefficients and what's happening with the even coefficients and trying to establish a general pattern. I showed you how to do that in the previous two examples. So this time I'm not going to go through all of those details of computing uh, A2, A3, and so on. I'm just going to reveal what happens with the um, odd coefficients and what, the, what happens with the even coefficients. I'm going to start with the even ones. So all of the even coefficients except for um, A sub 2 uh, can be found uh, using this formula. And a sub 2 you can um, find by plugging in um, uh, n equals 0 into this recursive definition, right? OK, cool. But yeah, all of the other ones, um, all of the other even um, coefficients can be found in terms, of, uh, in terms of a sub 0, like using this formula. And a sub 2 is also in terms of a sub 0, right? OK, cool, cool, cool. Just, yeah, like if you plug in n equals 0 here, we have to have a sub 0 on the right side right here. Yeah? OK, OK, OK. Anyway, now that's what happens with the um, even uh, coefficients of our solution y. And our solution y, again, is over here. And this is what happens with its odd coefficients. Um, all of the odd coefficients are related to a sub 1 in this way. And so by the discussions in the previous video, then we could um, recognize how to write our solution y by grouping together all of the um, even um, x power terms, including x to the 0th term here. Uh, and then, of course, we have uh, factored out a sub 0, which uh, was a part of all of the even x powered term co coefficients, right? All of the coefficients of the even x powers 
um, had a sub zero in them and I factored it out here. And then all the odd ones had a sub one and I factored it out here. And this is all of the even ones grouped together and we can write them more succinctly using sigma here for the rest of them except for the first two even ones here. And um, other than the first odd one, we could write the rest of them more succinctly using sigma here. And like, you know, in the first example and in, and in one part of the second example, uh, we were able to see like the sigma expressions here at the end uh, in our solution and recognize them as like uh, uh, some uh, easy to recognize Maclaurin series, so some recognizable function. And such is not the case here. We can't recognize either of them as being like the Maclaurin series of this function or that function. So that's that. And sometimes that's the way life be. <laughs> no. Um, all right. Um, I'm done here and hope you've learned a lot. Take care.